It's time for the midseason patch, and the tank tier list has been pretty shaken up by the massive changes they got. Armor is back to its Overwatch 1 state, and the tank passive has been upgraded two times over. We've barely had time to process the Arisa nerf, and now we're also getting four tank buffs, and some of them are massively impactful. Let's get started at the bottom, and this season, all tanks are good enough to stay out of F tier. But we've still got the least valuable tank, Roadhog in D tier. The patch buffed a lot of tanks, but because Roadhog doesn't have any armor, he's not resisting damage from tanks and flankers like the others are. The more armor you have, the more 50% damage reduction you have against at least half the tank roster, and Roadhog has none. At least he's got an immediate advantage from the region passive change. He now gets 50 health per second after 5 seconds without taking damage. A decent heal rate, but Roadhog is really the one hero who doesn't need it. Whenever he's out of the fight, he's always okay anyway with his massive self heal. And the best heroes for taking advantage of the passive have at least some type of movement or damage blocking. Roadhog very clearly has neither. He just waddles around while soaking damage. And although his damage output was solid until now, he does get his damage reduced by 44% against armor. It's not 50% like the others thanks to the Roadhog rework changing the projectiles he fires. 44% is definitely still bad though. Even Winston and Ball are are going to be able to tank more shots, especially considering that Roadhog really relies on headshot damage too. Now he has a reduced headshot multiplier that deals 25% less damage against tanks. It's definitely not better than before. If you're looking to rank up on your favorite heroes, check out the link in the description below to get access to a Game Leap membership. There are tons of guides and courses that can level up your game and help you get better, faster. Make sure to check it out and enjoy the video. Moving up to C tier is Doomfist. He already was one of the worst dive tanks, but still decent thanks to his tank buffering abilities. His rocket punch alone is really strong in the tank mirror, both for setting up your team and for keeping the enemy push at bay, but he's fully effective by armor, and because each of his shots deal a total of 55, that's 27.5 damage per shot. Even the lowest armor amounts will tank 4 to 8 shots easily, which is a lot of Doom's time. And of course, he himself doesn't have any armor to work with. At least he's more versatile than Hog, but without as much of the chaos factor, and outside of the tank matchup, he's pretty good at dueling everybody else. It's just not a great time to play Doom when Cassidy, Kiriko, and Lucio are so consistently strong, and when the other dive tanks all bring more utility to the engage, and have a good chunk of armor too for the head-to-head -head matchup. Already moving up to B tier, Orisa's up next. She got a lot worse after the nerfs, but now she's honestly pretty normal again. A strong neutral, great damage soaking abilities, but they're not literally always available anymore. For this new patch though, because she has the second most armor in the game, other tanks are going to take a while to whittle her down. She's not going to be the tank slayer because she isn't also that great into armor. She gets her damage reduced by almost 40%, right between the previous patch with 30% and the new maximum of 50. But not all tanks have armor, and the two worst tanks Doomfist and Roadhog don't have any. At least Arisa keeps owning those heroes, but as for being better than just beating the other weaker tanks, it's not looking good. Most long range DPS spam better into armor now, and Arisa actually got a lot of value out of the flat 30% armor damage reduction, but with the new decreased headshot damage passive, it shouldn't be too bad. All tanks are slightly better, so that's why Aris is in B tier. Even when she's not meta, she's tough to kill and a solid counter. Moving on to one of the buffed heroes this patch, next in B tier is Zarya. Her grab getting better is a real breath of fresh air after it's been so mediocre for so long. Not only has she not been played much at all, but grab hasn't been impactful enough on its own either. Zarya has some pretty hard matchups with only two bubbles for herself, but her damage has been pretty good. As a beam hero, it hasn't even changed into armor. It's 30% like it was before, but unfortunately, it still doesn't matter. She just doesn't do enough right now. Spam teams blow her up when she takes space, brawl teams can run right over her, and dive teams can force all her abilities from afar before committing on her or someone else. Grav being better helps a lot for snowballing and keeping the fight tempo going, but getting it going in the first place is always going to be a bit rough. Zarya is one of the most comp dependent heroes in the game, but if you're comboed with an aggressive DPS player, you can really amplify the presence and get your own damage numbers up as well. Beam damage is its own special type, so if you can get your charge high up, even D.Va will have to respect your strength. Moving on to the top half of B tier, it's Wrecking Ball. He's got a lot of straight buffs, and they're good enough that he's pretty devastating in the right hands. But you've got to be going for slams a lot more given how much better Pile Driver is, and that's where it kind of gets out of Wrecking Ball's hands. Some maps and some heroes just make it impossible for you to get a successful slam engage. And although he's got decent range poke, other tanks are a lot better now. Ball hasn't ever been a great tank buster, but he's always held his own. Not anymore though, as he gets the full 50% damage reduction into armor. But still, like I mentioned earlier, Pile Driver is much better. Even though sharing your shields isn't anything special, the ability itself used for yourself is still good enough to save you from dying during a 5-man slam. You can always survive it if you slam, shield, and roll away without going for any other damage. It's usually worth it just because of how good slam is at setting up kills for your team. Only a crazy counter comp with Cassidy Grenade, Anna Sleep, Ram Slow, or Sigma Rock can keep you close enough to confirm the kill. Although Ball is pretty comfortable in the upper half of B tier, he still does get countered by Boops. Timing is everything, because even though Wrecking Ball can do a lot, he gets outclassed by a lot of heroes on the flank and in the engage. So if you're not getting consistent massive engages on your slams, it's going to be pretty hard to win the game. You don't need to be getting kills on the first go, because Immortality Field and Protective Suzu and all sorts of burst healing and mitigation exist, but with 8 seconds on the cooldown, Ball can go in with a strong engage pretty often. You just won't have shields for every other engage, so you'll have to play a bit safe, and that's where Ball is still pretty killable. He's not overpowered enough yet that he can move up to A tier. If there's any tank that could move up soon, it's the next tank at the top of B tier, Malga. Every new patch he's always lurking in the shadows just because of how insanely good Cardiac Overdrive is. The 10 second cooldown and 4 second duration overdrive 
forward drive might be better than the current 12 and 5 seconds version, but it's still an extremely high value ability for your allies. Sometimes it can feel lackluster when you're hard focusing on getting kills yourself, but Mauga's aura for his team is what really makes him so good. Dealing damage isn't as good as before with the armor effect, but Mauga's ignition damage is good poke anyway. But more importantly, he is hard to kill. He has so much health to burn through, and now that headshots do less to tanks, bursting him down from the front is even harder. The Mauga head to head is going to be even more miserable with this change. But either way, he can really punch upwards. He doesn't have the most unstoppable kit, even with his unstoppable charge, but he's easy to force players out with and has a crazy good engage. Everything in between can be pretty difficult, but most of the time creative DPS choices can fill in those gaps. You can't always rely on your team, but with Mauga you can at least win spam trades on your own and then hit the backline with overdrive during the big push. He's not more fun or interactive, but he's not bad either. Now for A tier, which has some new tanks for the lower and upper tiers. Starting off with D.Va, the most polarizing tank this patch. She has the most armor, but she also deals the least damage into it. It doesn't sound good, but you can't forget, after Season 9, tanks are more about tanking. So as long as your kit supports your team enough, and you can take and hold space on the objective, you're all good. And D.Va takes those boxes for sure. High mobility, high mitigation, she's only lost out on some of her burst damage this patch. She's stuck at the bottom of A tier because she definitely relied a lot on winning the tank matchup. She's too defensive of a choice in dive matchups outside of a select few maps, so having that decent shotgun damage was great. The armor revert has changed all that, and Season 9 again gave more armor to tanks that didn't have as much before. High skill diva play is monstrous as always, and Defense Matrix always demands respect and can always clutch up for your team, but she definitely hasn't gotten better this patch, and judging by her damage output into other tanks, it's probably lucky if it doesn't get worse than A tier. She's already been overtaken by tanks she previously outclassed, like next in line, Junker Queen. A 2 second reduction for Shout is pretty decent. Queen is great at limit testing with her explosive self heal abilities, so now that she has 2 less seconds to wait for her next Shout, it's a lot easier to play more aggressively between engages. Queen has a great poke neutral, and she's actually pretty hard to counter. Other heroes may have crazier team buffs, but killing Queen needs some sort of slow, stun, or displacement. Her small hitbox gives her such an advantage even without any armor. Just like Mauga, her aura is great for her team, so it's not always about how much you can do by rushing in for yourself. For individual plays, you have your Jagged Blade. It won't be pulling tanks anywhere this patch, but for a 5 second cooldown with great range, it doesn't take too long to consistently hit smaller targets with it. And each hit is a chance for a pick. With her improved shot cooldown, it's really easy to collapse on the enemy team right after forcing abilities with your knife. It's a nice little combo that makes her a lot better than tanks without a high value skill shot. Onto the top 2 in A tier, we've got a massive jump from Reinhardt. It's almost like he was buffed with the armor change in mind before it even happened, because he now has the perfect high damage swings and armor health pull to dominate lobbies again. All the Rhine bros can finally be unleashed, because Rhine is in a good state. Not overpowered, but definitely good. He's still very counterable, and when the arms race of how brawly the brawl comp can get starts, Ryan gets outclassed fast. But his own brawl type of shielding his DPS carries and forcing the lineup with his massive shield health pool works well. It's not easy to deal with at all, and when played well can actually be pretty oppressive. This is about as good as Ryan can get without being too busted, but even now he could just be a bit too good. Overwatch 2 is way too fast paced though even now, so if you can't keep up with the pushes, you'll be holding your shield slowly waiting for the fight loss. But hey, it's much better than before, to the point where Ryan is legitimately a top 4 tank. Not bad at all. At the top of A tier is pretty much the more consistent option, Ramatra. He's pretty objectively worse with the new changes, since he doesn't have crazy good armor in the poke phase anyway, and he gets the full 50% damage reduction, but he's also a champion space holding machine. His shield is still 1000 HP, breaking it still feels like a massive waste and it pretty much is. Ram's nemesis form redeems him a lot though, since his punches are better into armor now, and 75% damage resistance on his block is always good enough, regardless of what armor does after that gets calculated. He also has his vortex, his slow keeps Junker Queen from winning the matchup and makes life a lot harder for dive tanks looking for an easy engage. If any radical new metas emerge, he can be left behind pretty fast, but his cooldown cycle is as hard to break through as ever. Ram's the ultimate frontline damage soaker, especially combined with his vortex to block anyone trying to push behind you. And now for the final two tanks in S tier, first up we're finally seeing Winston up here. As the dive tank representative for S tier, he's really bringing it up this season. Season 9 gave him a decent damage upgrade, and now that armor has equalized the tank damage trade, Winston's armor piercing Tesla cannon is actually close to a lot of other tanks damage outputs. Add that onto his high speed jump and bubble, and he can frontline match up when he needs to, even against D.Va. Winston takes a lot more to counter now, with Reaper and Tracer being a lot worse into him. That's the default Winston counter and the default flanker dealing half damage until they break his 250 armor. And Winston also has one of the biggest head hitboxes. That 25% less headshot damage is fantastic, and in Primal Rage too. He's gotten decently tankier this season. It's pretty difficult to get into Winston when he's usually easily countered, but when in doubt you can always play for damage. 40 meter range poke is just what you need on the long sight lines, and dipping into the front line to burn the tank armor for your team is also a good help. As long as you can occupy attention without dying, you're golden, and Winston is probably the best at doing so in the game. Bubble on backline and they're out of the fight, no problem. Playing dive isn't always possible though, so when it comes to the next tank in S tier, we've gotta have the frontline police. Finishing off with Sigma, he still has enough power to hold all other frontline tanks at bay, even if he has to play pretty far from some of them, like Reinhardt. He's the biggest trouble for Sigma in the frontline by far, but besides that, Sigma's actually gotten way scarier with the new flux change. Not requiring line of sight means you're confirming more 
more damage and more roots with every ultimate. He's also just better after the armor changes. He doesn't have any armor at all, and his damage output is a lot better with a tiny 5 damage reduction compared to the flat 30%. Poking armor just makes Sigma's spam phase even better. As an S tier tank, Sigma has an insanely high skill ceiling on top of his easy value, and that's only gotten easier this patch with the crazy flux change of course. He's not a must pick and he probably won't become one either, but he's definitely a reliable choice for long range maps when you want to just dominate the front line, while still having the range and utility to contest flanks and off angles. That's it for the tank tier list for mid season 10. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.